Okay, this section is on 2.6 graphs of rational functions. So I'm going to take you through on graphing rational equation. So when we talk about rational, it is when it's a fraction format that this is happening. So we have asymptotes when you have a fraction format. But if you don't have a fraction format, then you don't have an asymptote. So the first asymptote I want to look at is the VA because that's usually the easiest one. So the VA by definition is found from the denominator right there. So we're going to set the denominator equal to 0. So I'm going to take my x minus 5 and we're going to set it equal to 0. We bring the 5 over on the other side right there. We get x is equal to 5. So that's the equation that we want, x is equal to 5. Now when you do your asymptotes, make sure you have an equation on this right here. Okay, the next part now we probably want to look for is the HA. Now the HA is taking the numerator right here and then also taking the denominator and then figuring out is um, what your exponent is. So we're comparing these two right there. We're ignoring the rest of the equation right there and just comparing to see if I have an HA or an SA because I have one or the other. I don't have both. So the rule is if the top is bigger than the bottom, then you have an SA, right? If you have the two exponents right here are the same, then you can just simplify it, and that will be your HA. If the denominator is greater than the numerator, then your HA is gonna be Y equals zero. <clears throat> so in this case right here, we're gonna go ahead and do the long division, so HA actually is none, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a long division to figure out what my SA is right here. So the long division is then X minus five is on the outside right here, and then we have is then X squared minus two X plus three, Okay, so then from here, we're going to go ahead and say x times something has to give us x squared. So that's x right there. This is x squared. x times negative 5 gives me negative 5x. So it goes underneath this right here. Make sure it's underneath here. If it was a number, then it would be underneath here instead. Okay, so we're going to subtract that. This cancels out. We have negative 5 minus a negative. So that's going to be a plus right there. So that's going to give us plus 3x. And then I'm going to drop down my 3 right there, plus 3. So we have this x times something has to give us 3x. So since this is positive, remember the clue is if this is positive, then it's positive up here. If this is negative, then it's negative up here, okay? So we have this 3 right there, 3 times x gives us 3x. 3 times ne uh, negative 5 gives us negative 15 right there. So subtracting, and then we have then is, this is gone right there, 3 minus a negative 15, that's a plus right there. So 15 plus 3 is going to give us, what, 18? So 18 is the remainder. So remainder is 18 over, and then we write it as the x minus 5 as your denominator down here. Okay? So now let's copy that over here. So that's going to be x plus 3 with a remainder of 18 over the x minus 5. Okay. So now using these asymptotes right here, we're going to go ahead and set, um, set up our graph right there, and then from there um, set up a table, okay? So since I don't have an HA, HA normally, if we graph it out, is going to go horizontally this direction, but I don't have an HA, it's none, so I'm not going to bother with that one. I do have is a VA of 5 right here, so we're going to have to count out 5 here. So here we are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the vertical asymptote right here is at 5. So I'm going to do dotted lines because it's imaginary right here. So we're just using that to help us with our functions, the graph of our function. Okay. The next one we do have is an essay. Now when you have an essay, you're not going to graph out the remainder. There's no way to graph out remainder. So, oops, I forgot to put y equals right here. So we're graphing out then as y equals plus x plus 3 right there. That's the graph we want to graph out. So plus 3 is a y-intercept, right? That's from algebra 2. So here we are as plus 3 is the intercept. So that's 1, 2, 3 right here. That's your intercept. The 1 right here is the slope, so it's 1 over 1, right? So you're going to run 1 and go, down, uh, go up 1. So here's run 1 and then go up 1. So I'm going to do it. 3 dots about is a good number for approximation. So here we have another one from here. I'm going to run one and up one. So here's another one right there. Okay. So again, from here, the y-intercept of three right here, three. I ran one and up one because it's positive. So I ran one, up one. And then from here again, same thing, run one, up one. And that gives me three dots. So then from here, I'm going to go ahead and do my slant asymptote. So here we are, slant asymptote. 
I don't know how far this is going to go, so I'm just going to create this large graph right here just in case I need all of that. Okay? So now, I like this 5 right here as my starting point to determine how many points I want. So we, we said to get about 3 points, a minimum of 3 points on the left-hand side of 5, and then get about 3 points on the right-hand side of 5. That's about a good number. If you want more, you can always do more, but a minimum of 5, because if you do 2 or 1, it's not going to clearly tell us unless you're really good about these graphs. All right? So since 5 is the middle, so let's go 3, 1, 2, 3, that's about 2. So we're going to start on the table at 2 right there, okay? So I'm going to go 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to blank out right here because that's my asymptote right there. So obviously there's not going to be a number. And if I try to substitute 5 into this equation, I'm going to get 5 minus 5, which is 0. Anything divided by 0 is undefined. This is where the undefined comes in. So undefined is an asymptote right there. Okay, so then I do three more after the five, so that's six, seven, and eight right there. Okay, now we're going to take these numbers right here, the x values, and actually substitute it into this y equation right here, and then figure out what the y number is. Okay, so using then our calculator, all right, so then we're going to literally plug it in. So now, um, when you put these numbers inside the calculators, make sure you put a parentheses around the numerator and then parentheses around the denominator. If not, what it's going to do is it's going to calculate all of this, whatever the final answer is, and then if you go divided by this number, it's actually going to divide the whole thing, divide by this number, and then minus 5, the final product. So it's not going to do the calculation right. So make sure you do that correctly. So here we go. So I'm going to set it up as parentheses, and then the first number I'm going to put in is 2 right there. So let's put in 2. And I like to do the extra, oops, let's put an extra parentheses in here. So 2 squared. And I like to put the um, parentheses also in it because then it helps me when I go back and replace the numbers. It makes it easier because I know exactly where to replace it. I don't have to go back and look at the equation because from there I can just say, okay, all of this is the number that I'm substituting. So, okay, here we go. So, again, this is right here is x squared right there. So that's where the 2 squared right there is. And then minus 2, and I put a parenthesis around this x right here. So that's the parentheses, plus 3, plus 3. And notice I close the parentheses right here and open the parentheses right here. So I said to the calculator, this is all the numerator right there. And then we're going to do the same thing for the denominator. So I'm going to go to parentheses, and then x right there, was which, which was the value of 2, and then minus 5, and close parentheses. Okay? So that's this right here, the denominator right there, that's this part right here, all right? So that way the calculator notes this is numerator, all of that divided by the denominator right there. Okay, let's press enter, and we're gonna get negative one. So that's a negative one right here. Okay, so the nice thing about this now with the graph calculator is now I can go back and substitute three. So if we go second, second, enter, right, enter, it's going to call up that equation right there again, the previous equation that we just had right there, and I can go back now and put all the parentheses with a 3. So that's really easy then. So I just go in, substitute in 3 right there, wherever there's a parentheses basically. I'm going to put in 3, so here's another 3, and oops, there's another 3. Okay, now press enter, and that's going to give me negative 3. So that's negative 3 right there. And do the same thing for 4. So second enter, and we're going to go into there, all the parentheses. We're going to replace it with 4s. So here's 4. Here's another 4. And here's another 4. So press enter. It's going to give us a negative 11. And again, we won't put in 5 because 5 is going to give us undefined. Now, if you don't trust me, let's just go ahead and do that so you can see what I'm talking about. So when you go in, you put in 5. So here we have five, oops, five, and we put in five, put in five, and you're gonna get rejected because right there it says divided by zero, it can't do. So we're not gonna, um, obviously that's not gonna give us an answer right there. Okay, so now I need to go to, all right. So then go back to it, and then we're gonna put in six now. So put in six. So if it gets a rejection like that, that's the reason why, because the denominator right there is going to give us undefined right there, okay? So 6, 6, and then press enter. That's going to give us 27, so that's 27. Second enter again. Oops. Yeah, second enter. 
and then give us uh, what seven now? Okay, so seven. So seven, seven, seven. Enter is nineteen. So nineteen, and last one, which is now eight. So we're gonna replace that with eight. So here we have is eight, eight, and eight. Okay, so press enter, and that's gonna give us 17 right there. Okay, so now I'm ready to graph. So now I'm gonna take each of these, and this goes back to basically algebra one. We're gonna take each of these points right there and plot them first, and then we're gonna do the graph. So at x equals two and y equals negative one, so let me do a couple more dashes down here. So I think, oh, I need to go to about 11, right? Because 11 is about somewhere around there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just gonna say 11 somewhere down here. So we'll just call it 11 out here, okay? All right, so then at two, negative one. So at two, which is right here, negative one, the point is right there. At three, negative three, so here is three, negative three is one, two, three, so here's the other point. And then at four was negative 11, which we then designated down here somewhere, right? And you don't want to cross or touch the asymptote right there, so we just leave it out there. All right, now we go six. Now six is 27, so we're going to have to just put labeling out there because it's going to be way off the chart. So somewhere way off here, so I'm going to... Now, when you do this graphing, as you can see, you want to make sure you need, leave enough space down here on the graphing part of it, or make sure when you do the table, this is going to justify then how you're going to set up this chart right here, or the table right here, okay? So 6 at 27, since I don't have space up here, so I'm just going to say 27 is somewhere up here, so somewhere around here at 6, 27, that's the dot right there. Then at 7, 17, so that's about a little less than that, so somewhere around here is 17. So 7, 17 is over here. And then 8, 17 is going to be somewhere around there. I'm sorry, uh, 7, 19, so that's 19. Oops, that's 19. Okay, let's go a little bit above 19, somewhere around there. Okay, 19, 17. Okay. So now we're ready. So let's go ahead and graph this out. So the graph is more of a curve, a hyperbola. So let's start with this right here. If I have three points right there, that's the middle guy right there is kind of like the turning point of my uh, parabola shape right there. So I'm going to use this. Don't cross this asymptote right here. Use the asymptote. So you're going to get really close to it, but never crossing over it. And so then here's another one right here. So here's the question now. Do I actually consider turning up here? Or do I consider turning down here or further down? So actually, let me extend this asymptote right here. So I know I have to be within the asymptote, so I can't go like this way off here because then I'm crossing the asymptote. So I have to stay within the asymptote. So I'm not sure if I have to go up higher or down lower. So I'm just going to substitute numbers in. So this is why I say minimum of three because you may need a fourth one just to determine how that turning point comes about. So here we add, add zero right here, if x is um, zero, I'm just gonna substitute in and see, see how high it's gonna go or low. So if I put in zero to this equation, this is gone, this is gone, I have a three, zero divided by negative five is negative, so it's gonna be three divided by negative five, so that's gonna be, give me a negative number somewhere around here, which is less than one, so I know then I have to turn around here, somewhere around here, and then I'm gonna use the asymptote. So here we are, and we're gonna go with that asymptote right there. Okay, so again, I use this number zero because I wasn't sure if I was going to go up higher right there or if I was going to go lower down here. So I just substituted in zero to this equation and then determined that it was three divided by a negative number and that number is less than one. So it's going to be somewhere around here, less than one, right? Less than one right here. So I just made a little U-turn right here. And then again, I use the asymptote as my guiding point right there. Okay, so same thing with this one right here. The middle right here is going to be my turning point. So here we have this, something like this, and I'm going to use that as a middle point right there. And so we know then this point right here has to be above the asymptote right there. So we're going to take that above the asymptote, make a U-turn right here. So it should kind of look more of a parabola shape and then extend this out. So make sure you're graphing um, paper right here, or at least the graphing portion of it. Um, save it later after you have done this chart right here so you can kind of give yourself enough space right there, okay? So here's our hyperbola. So as we said in class, 
this hyperbola and this hyperbola right here should be opposites of each other. So this is correct, so that looks good. If a hyperbola was in here and then also in here, then something went wrong, or if you had one dot here and then two dots in here, then something went wrong with your calculation, so then just go back and check it because they normally are opposites of each other hyperbola. So if you had one right here, then the other one would be, uh, the pair would be in here. And since we had this one right here, then we know the pair is going to be in here. Okay, so that's going to be the one with the slant asymptote because I know that's usually the one that's a little bit more difficult. So that's why I use that example. But if you had a vertical asymptote instead of a slant, so the vertical would be easy. A vertical is right here. And if you had a horizontal, you would have it somewhere going this direction, either horizontally in the top or horizontally in the bottom. And you do exactly the same thing. You use the vertical asymptote as your middle point right there. And then from there, three points to the left, three points to the right, and then from there, graph it out, and then put your plots together. It should be nice curves. We, should, we love curves right there, all right? So now go ahead and try the class word problems.